Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 331. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions community on Facebook. Um, with us tonight we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is a webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's based in the UK, resides in Wimbledon. Um, he um, is also a member of the Google AdSense, uh, sorry, he's a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. Tim Capper is CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, Tim is uh, also a Google product expert on the uh, Google My Business community. David Rosam is a leading internet marketer uh, based in West Sussex, uh, um, below London. Would that be right, below? Um, David uh, can be found, he's a copywriter of many years standing. He can be found at writingforseo.org and davidrosam.com. Micah Fisher-Kirchner is uh, head of SEO for Turn River Capital in the United States. He's based uh, on the west coast of the USA, uh, not too far from Silicon Valley. Um, he's also the can, well, chairman of uh, uh, the, a meetup group um, pretty close to there. I'm sorry, Micah, I meant to find out uh, exactly the name of your meetup group. <laughs> BayAreaSearch.org. Bay okay, and you can find it at BayAreaSearch.org. Our first question tonight, um, we've only got three today, this week. Um, it's uh, titled um, um, Measuring Reservations uh, with Google within Google My Business. It's from Cassie Richardson who asks, is there any way to measure reservations with Google within Google My Business? It would be nice to see data on reservations made from listing slash knowledge label versus native, etc. Um, so measuring reservations, uh, no. Uh, secondly, there's, there's no way to do it in GMB. Um, you could ask the provider you're using. Um, they sometimes provide tracking, but it all depends on the on the uh, on the actual um, uh, system you're using. Another thing that came to, uh, came to my mind was um, obviously if you well you you know you should check with your system provider. But the other thing that you can see is uh, obviously in your GMB, you list where your reservation can be, where your book, you, you know, your booking. Um, you can put a UTM tracking code onto that, uh, which will then show up in your analytics. Um, whether you can do cross-platform analytics with your, with your provider, that's another story. It all depends on them. Um, but yeah, at least you'll have some kind of idea on what's on on what you know what is being used for. As for whether it came from inside of Maps or it came from the Knowledge Panel, that is a little bit more difficult to determine. But you can um, check that you you know that URL with the UTM tracking code in your Search Console. And okay, uh, although it doesn't give you, uh, although it won't tell you where it came from, um, you can typically guess sometimes whether it came from maps or the actual, um, you know, knowledge panel, because knowledge panel will only typically show up for the branded search query. Um, and if that URL had a branded search query, then you can guess that it came from um, a branded search query and knowledge panel. And if it's got more specific, like if it's got things like, um, for example, hairdresser near me, hairdresser Corby, hairdresser, you know, um, 
near bus stop or whatever the case may be, then you can pretty much guesstimate that those came from within maps uh, or local search. So yeah, although you can't, you know, get that specific, you can at least guesstimate what's happening. Thank you, Tim. All right, so um, let's um, call that an answer unless anybody else has something to add. Okay, let's go to the next. Um, this one is from uh, Craig Anthony. Um, it's titled Transitioning from HTML to WordPress. What tips do you have or things I should consider before choosing a theme? This is not really an SEO question, but I told Dan to put it in because otherwise we'd only have two for the night. So we increased our uh, capacity by 50%. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely some <clears throat> SEO considerations. Um, I'm presuming with this is like custom HTML to a WordPress one. Um, I think things to consider are oftentimes specific themes can have poor uh, SEO impacts. Um, it could for sure or definitely uh, slow down the site. So if you have a theme that isn't well optimized, um, or you're going to be adding a lot of plugins on top of that, uh, your your custom built one may have been a lot faster. So you need to be aware that the theme you choose may dramatically slow down the site, impact the business, impact your SEO, um, in, such, in that way. Uh, additionally, uh, along kind of the same lines, if the code is not, let's just say at least, Possible. Um, there are things that it might create problems as well for your SEO, not from a W3C standpoint, but more of um, hiding content. Um, some themes, at least back in the day, would have links on them that shouldn't be there uh, from third parties trying to you know, garner uh, as, a, as a link building campaign. So you kind of have to have care with the type of theme and what it's doing, both from a visual load and um, code side of things. Uh, and those kind of together are aspects that can, can play a part in um, how your SEO does it when you switch over from one kind of, really, I mean, from one CMS to another. It's just kind of an aspect to be aware of. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, uh, this one from JLo. It's titled 301 redirect the URL to slightly different content. Um, he said, is it okay to 301 redirect uh, URL to slightly different content, but satisfying the same intent? He said, I was always thinking it's a good idea, but today I read an article uh, uh, and he's referring to an article which you can see the link of uh, in the uh, Dumb SEO Questions group on uh, uh, Facebook. Um, it's an article by uh, Roger Monty uh, and um, recommend it. And anyway, John Mueller said, we can forward page rank through 301 and 302 uh, redirects. Essentially, what happens is we use these redirects to pick a canonical. And 301 redirecting for 404s makes sense if you have a 1 1 replacement URL. Otherwise, we'll probably see it as a soft 404 and treat it like a 404. Um, J Lo said, uh, so it seems that 301 should only be done with exactly the same content. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks. Okay, I'll uh, I'll give some thoughts. Um, I think that uh, J Lo is um, <clears throat> reading slightly more into uh, what John Miller said than he actually said. Um, I think the I think there's a worry 
implicit in this that uh, something being treated of 404 is a bad thing. Um, it is a bad thing if it is 404ing, but I think what he's saying there is that um, the 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 link will still work, obviously, but uh, you may not get all the uh, uh, you may not get all the link juice. Well, you won't get the link juice anyway if uh, if you don't put that uh, that 301 in. And you've got the three the 301 will help um, will help users. So um, I think that uh, I think this is just one aspect of um, of redirection, uh, and I think you've got to think about your your users as well as what Google is doing um, with uh, <coughs> with PageRank, Link Juice, whatever you want to call it. Um, I would uh, want to give my uh, my users a good uh, a good experience. Thank you, David. Yeah, it, you know, something that's slightly different is fine to be essentially true in redirecting. Um, it's only on the canonical where it needs to be pretty close to an exact, um, where things can, can are more suggestive than they are um, declared as. So you have more wiggle room fundamentally uh, with a 301 redirect to a slightly different content. Um, that's yeah that, that's that's essentially kind of been standard for a bit um and works out fairly well uh how different yeah uh, at least enough where <clears throat> if you're trying to forward a product page up to a category page that's a little too wait a little bit too different but you know if it's a new version for the year um you know slightly different modification of a specific product then um that's you, you know, that's fine to be through one and over. So, um, and that's, yeah, to, to month, uh, let's see, it's got Monty one I just saw here. Um, yeah, well, I mean, usually, well, what do we define as full? Um, things aren't usually fully passed over. There's always some value lost usually uh, regardless. So I'm not sure kind of the agreement about the 100%, but um, yeah, you, you know, you're going to lose some, but you're, you know, the, the closer they are, the more likely I would say you're going to get the, the most amount of value out of it. Okay, anybody else? All right, well, we all know um, what happens next. It's thank you for watching time. Um, it's good to have just three questions uh, occasionally. Um, particularly when we've all got the, well, at least I've got the flu. Um, anyway, we'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, we thank you for your interest. Um, your your uh, interest in, in what we do makes what we do worthwhile. I'd like to thank uh, the people on our uh, Facebook group, people like Mar Michael Martinez, uh, answering questions uh, through the week. Um, and I'd like to thank Micah fisher Kirshner, Tim Kappa, uh, David Rosam and Masataki Wasa for their uh, contributions tonight. Um, Okay. A new, a new setup. I'm, I'm not yet getting this right. Um, but we 